in Pasadena, California for the first ever KidCon 2017. This is a Comic Con, especially for kids. Did you fly um, into so? Did you fly into so? No, but Hank, my TV husband, flies in the show. What? I know. But how he get fly? I think they use computers, <laughs> like the same way they do video games or action movies. Uh -oh. They they do that. Sometimes they hook him up to strings and pull him up, but most of the time it's done just with computers. But do you actually <laughs> have powers? I don't actually have powers. I never know how to answer that question because they don't want to lie to anybody. But I know that when you watch me on TV, it's like I have powers, right? And they do a good job making me look like I really have electricity that comes out of my hands like this, right? What? I know. I am, um, maybe these guys use a light. It does look like a light, but I think they do it with computers. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Say Thunder fans! Thunder fans! So we have found this ancient relic from a past civilization. Now we believe that this was uh, worshipped by the population as some kind of uh, sacred relic. Um, it is called the Fidget Spiner. Can you tell me a little bit about your book series? I would love to. See, this book, How to Catch the Cold, is actually about my son, Tyler. And he gets to school, and he realizes his best friend is missing. And his imagination runs wild. So the next day he gets to school, and another friend is missing. The next day, another friend's missing. He thinks the most horrible things happen to his friends, until his teacher calms him down and says, nothing happened to your friends. They simply caught a cold. But my two children, and my nieces and nephews, are the five little boogers in my, in my life. So throughout the story, you have to look for these five hidden boogers and pick them out. If you find a sixth booger, it's yours. I didn't put it there. And that's so uh, thanks for coming. It's a, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for having me. Um, so I'm going to hand you here. Thank you for having me. Um, so, uh, so since it's kid count, let's, let's talk. Uh, let's talk to you younger years. I mean, we're still, we're still mostly on the show. Because you were yeah. how old were you when you started the show? Uh, when I started the show, I had just turned 10. 10, okay. Um, okay, so let's, let's talk after you. You were, you, you did a lot of the theater right here? I did, I did a lot of theater and that's how I really got into acting itself. I never aspired to really be a television actor or anything like that. I just like to make people laugh. And eventually I did so many plays and an agent eventually came and saw one of my plays and they were interested in me and they decided to start representing me and then that led to a couple auditions which led to me meeting a manager which led to me coming out to doing NRVD. And the funny thing about NRVD is when I got it, I thought it was absolutely insane. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm auditioning for Nickelodeon. This is amazing. Yeah. Because I never aspired to be a big television famous actress. I was just like, I like to live in the moment and just like make people laugh. I maybe auditioned in front of like maybe 12 or 13 of the like the big wigs of Nickelodeon. Which and you knew it was the final audition? Like they told you this is it? Uh, yeah, they said this is it. And it was probably about me and two other girls and like, 10 other boys because there's three boys in the show and one girl so they had to do there were all these other boys but like only three of the girls because there's only one girl in the show and when I went in it was just surreal for me and that's where I met my brothers like Mace Casey and Aiden and then that's also where I met my parents for the show and we did one final audition together and at the end of the night casting director told me that I got the job and I literally like did the cartwheel I was so excited it was amazing Okay, go ahead, sweetheart. 
Do you play practical jokes on each other at the set? That's a hard one. I've never been asked that question. Um, we used to pull pranks a lot, season one, season two, but it's just like, I think it was, we were just messing around with like the other whoopee cushion, so of course you can imagine the classic whoopee cushion, and I think we put it under the director's chair, and the director went and sat down, it was really, really funny, and everyone was laughing, so we were like nine years old, so that was like typical nine-year-old humor. Absolutely, and then he cut your close-ups after that, right? Yeah, yeah, he's like, uh, you're, I'm joking, <laughs> no. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. So much. Give me one second. What is your favorite thing to do on the weekends? My favorite thing to do on the weekends, well, I love to like go to the Grove in LA. The Grove is like one of my favorite places. I love to shop. I love to do boxing, tumbling. I love to paint. I love to sit at home and watch Netflix because I don't really get to do that a lot because I'm working like seven and a half hours a day. Um, and I like to go like ride my bike. Just do typical stuff a 14 year old will do. Are Casey and Mason in extremely annoying? <laughs> <laughs> well, we are siblings, so we all have our annoying moments, but um, we're all very, we're all, we all we all have that side to us, so <laughs> I wouldn't say they're extremely annoying, but they are my brothers, so <laughs> we're all annoying at some point. What's your favorite shows? My favorite shows? Mm -hmm. Well, I love SNL, Saturday Night Live, because that's where I've seen a lot of comedy roles and I'm able to, like I said, when I watch TV shows and movies, I get such a better respect for it. Yes. I love SNL because it's been around for so long, and one of my dreams is to be a host on SNL, which is which would be surreal for me. But I love SNL. I kind of like a child of heart. I still watch SpongeBob when I'm bored. <laughs> well, you're into comedy and improv. Um, I was wondering if you had any advice because um, I maybe want to take on acting someday, and I was wondering if you had any advice. Yeah. Um, the advice I would give to you is don't hold back. Like especially when you do comedy, go 110 percent. Go go more than what you feel because the more you like go for it the more they're gonna see you and be like oh they're not afraid to like take on this role and especially with comedy when I was nine and auditioned for the show um, Nickelodeon posted my audition tape and I was so young and full of life and I literally when I did the role I just I did 110 percent because I was so excited and like it was just Take the comedy and just run with it for sure. Because, like, just seriously, because you should, you can take, you can take a joke and make it. The joke could be funny in itself, but you could put your own like twist on it and make it like even funnier. And acting wise, I just say be confident and really like follow your dreams. I know that's like the saying everyone tells you, but for sure, hard work truly does pay off. I mean, I I've, I've worked very hard to get where I am today, and I'm very grateful for it. And just work super hard, and hard work definitely does pay off. And for sure, follow your dreams. So. All right, thank you. Thank you. There you go. And uh, boys and girls, you're going to have to leave it there. Put your hands together. I'm so excited. We get to take selfies with Lizzie. We end our day with lightsaber training with Kylo Ren and Ray. Hey, I'm getting pretty good. Lucasfilm, call me. I'm available for episode 9. If you like my videos, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. See you next time.